Thank you. Yeah, let's hope. I'm, I'm based in Stockholm, so we'll see how our trip back will be <laughs> this evening. Let's hope for the best. Uh, I'm also standing in for our uh, CEO, uh, Johan Emilsson, who was originally scheduled to come here to give this presentation, but we got the opportunity to be represented on the, uh, be part of the Swedish uh, state visit to Singapore. So he's part of that delegation, and we're very proud to, to be represented there as well. Uh, so I will be, uh, yeah, I should say that my, I'm a chief scientific officer at Sprint Bioscience, as you can see from the slide. I was also one of the co-founders when we started the company in 2009. And uh, what we are building is a little bit different from a lot of the other presentations you've heard today that have been companies focusing around a, s a specific asset, bringing that into the clinic. Uh, but what we are focusing on is really building a capability to do small molecule drug discovery and use that capability to drive multiple projects and um, we are focusing on oncology and we're also focusing on novel targets in oncology so that's how we intend to uh, execute on our vision to extend and improve lives of cancer patients by developing new and truly transformative types of, of treatment by focusing on, on novel targets and the part of being a sustainably profitable growth company, uh, the plan to execute that is to work with an early partnering strategy, which I will get back to uh, also uh, in some of the later slides. So, as I mentioned, we're based in Stockholm, in uh, Huddinge, right next to the uh, huge hospital there. And uh, what we have built now uh, at Sprint Bioscience, we're roughly 36 employees, and we've really built a world-class capability working with small molecule drug discovery and doing most of that work in-house, which is a bit different from a lot of other companies. So we have um, all of the core capabilities that you need to drive an early stage drug discovery project. Uh, in-house. So we have people working with protein science, producing target proteins, working with biochemical and biophysical assays. We also have structural biology in-house to be able to perform structure-based drug design. Uh, we have a medchem team to actually synthesize uh, novel compounds uh, in our own labs. And also a team, it says tumor biology here, uh, it's basically a capability to do cell-based assays and understand tumor biology, novel, novel tumor biology. And I come from AstraZeneca originally, before I was part of founding Sprint, and what I saw there was that there were some really powerful technologies um, in terms of small molecule drug discoveries that was coming up, a technology called fragment-based uh, drug discovery, which I will come back to. And I also saw some of the challenges in implementing that in a large organization. So what we wanted to build here was really a, um, a company where you have these different disciplines working really tightly together in a very collaborative fashion. And we think that is really key to, to the success in drug discovery, that you can have scientists from these different disciplines really working very tightly together. So uh, fragment-based drug design, uh, it's a method, basically, to develop small molecule drugs, which is a bit different from high throughput screening, in that you have compounds in your compound library that are much smaller than they would be in a regular high throughput screening library. So the word fragment in fragment-based is that you basically use fragments of drugs in your screening library. And that enables you to cover a lot of chemical diversity in that size range in a much fewer compounds compared to high throughput screening where you need hundreds of thousands or millions of compounds and you need also to build the infrastructure to handle all of that all of those compounds uh, but with a fragment based approach it requires much smaller uh, investments and a smaller compound library and it's very easy to in to uh, what's the word to implement in a, in a, in a smaller organization uh, so basically, it's a very efficient way to develop high-quality drug compounds. And it's also a way to 
work with novel targets where there is very little, very little precedence sometimes. So you all know about these processes, the different stages involved in taking a drug all the way to market. And uh, I mean, I'm a believer in that you should do what you do best. You should stick to what you're really good at. And at Sprint Bioscience, we are really good at preclinical drug discovery. Uh, and that is what we want to stick to. So that's why we have this early partnering business model where we look for licensed partners for our programs already at the preclinical stage before entering the clinic. And this, I mean, first of all, it alleviates a lot of costs from our sort of our funding. We don't have to fund the clinical trials on our own, but it also generates opportunities for early revenue, both in, form, in the form of upfront payments, but also when we license a project, we typically also offer to stay on board to support the project up to initiation of clinical trials, for example. And then that work that we do is then funded by the partner, which also uh, brings in some early stage revenue in, into the company, which is very valuable. And then it's the regular business model with milestone payments as the projects progress and also uh, royalties on sales once the a product reaches the market. And I think the fact that you can close licensing deals with a royalty component already when you're at the preclinical stage, I mean, shows that you have a, a, a good potential upside there uh, in, in terms of return on investment. So in, if you look at some of the of the deals that were done during 2023. There is actually a very large uh, number of pre-clinical deals that have been done. Um, so approximately 280 of, of the deals that were done during 2023 were done at the preclinical stage, and roughly 20% of the deal value was in deals made of, at that stage. Uh, so it's a significant market for, for preclinical oncology projects. And this is our uh, pipeline or our uh, portfolio of projects as it stands right now. We have one project which is out-licensed to day one biopharmaceuticals in the US. And there we, we are also currently collaborating with them, which is generating some nice revenue right now for us as well. And then we have a, a set of uh, different projects at different stages, targeting different novel uh, oncology targets. And uh, being the science guy, I just wanted to take the opportunity to talk about one of these projects, our uh, TREX-1 inhibitor program, which is in the middle here on the, on the table. And this is a project where we're trying to get to the fact that a lot of the immune oncology drugs that have been very successful in a certain subset of patients give very little benefit in other patients. And uh, the effect of those drugs is really dependent on the immune system being present in the tumors for those drugs to work. And what often happens is that the tumors have been able to create an environment where the immune system is sort of excluded and then trying to activate the immune system won't really help. So our TREX-1 program is an attempt to solve that problem and enable the power of uh, immunotherapies to, to a larger group of patients. So TREX-1, it's an enzyme, which is a DNA exonuclease, and it really acts to degrade DNA that's in the cytosol. So in, in a normal cell, um, if you look to the left here, I mean, if there is DNA in the cytosol, that is a sign that something has gone very wrong. Uh, and there are machinery in the cell to sense the presence of cytosolic DNA and trigger immune responses to trigger inflammatory signaling, release of cytokines and chemokines to call upon the action of the immune system to come and deal with this damaged cell. Uh, but what tumors manage to do, I mean, they also carry a lot of these damages that would cause release of cytosolic DNA. 
but for a tumor to form, it really needs to be able to escape the action of the immune system. And one way tumors can do that is by upregulation of the TREX1 enzyme and degrade, or thereby degrading the cytosolic DNA and stop this uh, immune signaling. So we have developed highly potent and also highly selective TREX1 inhibitors. And this is just some snapshot data from the very first proof of concept study that we performed using one of our TREX1 inhibitors. Uh, so to the left here you can see a nice dose-dependent effect on tumor growth with the, with the single agent. We also have indications that this compound is well tolerated. There was no effect on, on body weight of the animals and there were no clinical signs in any of the treated groups. And most interesting, I think, is the graph to the right here where you look at the proportion of immune cells in the tumors. And this is already after seven days of treatment, we can see an increased infiltration of immune cells into the tumors that is also dose dependent, sort of supporting the, the mode of action hypothesis for, the, for this program. Uh, so this is one example of, of a project that we are running. And um, just wanted to finish with this slide, how we look upon sprint bioscience as an attractive investment. I mean, we have a business model uh, that we have, we have uh, done a number of deals over the years. So we think that that business model is sort of proven in the industry. Uh, we have a good revenue model that is actually right now generating some revenue. We have a strong portfolio of programs uh, and also a very strong team with a very good capability to do innovative work in-house. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Martin. Um, as mentioned over and over um, these two days, and I think especially this morning, the financing climate uh, is tough. Um, what does that environment mean for the strategy and your business model? Yeah, I mean, right, right now, as I mentioned, we have this collaboration with, with a US-based company that is providing us with not only the upfront payments, but also payments for research funding basically that we do so i mean it's in my view it's sort of supporting this type of business model where you can try to extract value from novel ideas without a huge investment into each specific each individual project mm. do you even see that as a trend or do you feel quite alone in in that analysis and that business model of yours i mean when we started in 2009 there was a lot of focus on clinical programs and when we spoke to uh, to larger pharma companies, they were also more interested in clinical programs. But I mean, there's been a drift over the years where we have seen an increased interest from both larger and mid-sized companies to do earlier deals um, and to sort of get to early innovation uh, in, uh, earlier in the process. Uh, so I think over the years, we have definitely seen a sw uh, switch in that trend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're not able to outlicense an asset, would you take it into clinic or not? I mean, we have so far, we have been able to find licensing partner for most of our assets uh, that before I mean, having to take them into the clinic, so to say. And the strategy is to continue along that line. Um, I mean, given the capability that we have built now uh, over the years with uh, the platform that we have in-house, uh, I think it would be risky business to drive a single project into the clinic and sort of risking all of that, mm -hmm. that we have built over the years. Yeah, so, yeah the focus is very much on, on partnering still. You get a lot of questions. Um, I think we'll have time for one more. Will you get a positive financial result this year? <laughs> you have about a, little, yeah, a month <laughs> to go. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll have to wait for our, our report our financial reports to be issued before I can answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Um, Martin Andersson from C you are CSO. I'm sorry yeah. if I got that wrong from Sprint Bioscience. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.